Closed line 17 S Milky Way Spiral Arm Perseus Sagittarius Wild Seti Part 97. Um, based on the line 17 Wild Seti signal, the math equation is 14, 1, 1, 13, 2, and 1. Okay, so January 20th, 2012, 7.44 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. My thoughts on the Milky Way Spiral Arm. Now I know how the star formations are. Perseus is just past Sagittarius in this diagram below. I was wondering where they were before. So my thoughts. January 25th, 2012, 11.31 a.m. Okay. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Yeah. I just wanted to make sure I didn't have to go through the data first. I have more data there. Okay, I've seen the most recent NASA files and photos come up on video line 17L, Kepler spacecraft satellite, Dr. David Koch, NASA while SETI. Where I finally found out that the Maya planetary location is near the Kepler region of vision for the satellite that is currently exploring the stars and galaxies around the Pegasus and Sagittarius arm. This diagram on the left shows us that they were close to one another. In an earlier video based on a diagram, I said that Perseus was northwest of Sagittarius. This was before I even knew where it was, so I was guessing. In this diagram, it shows how closely related they are to one another. So that was exciting for me that I guessed right. Between the sightings of new planets, various stars, quasar alien radio signals, and the Wild Seti signal from 1977, along with the crop circle from a gray alien stating that he lives in this exact region. See videos line 15E and line 3. For more about the crop circle message with Arcebo Chilbolton binary codes from an alien, line 15E, um, the title is Wow Seti UFO Crop Circle Alien Contact Star Child Skull NGC 3034. That one might have changed, I'm not sure. Line 3 Alien UFO SETI WOW DNA Tridansna Gignus Chibolton Arcebo Radio Crop Circles. I am fully convinced that there is a host of alien life forms living out in outer space. Some of them are from the Maya culture, so it may be in human form. The question now is are they 3,000 years old? Or is the people from the Mayan culture who have survived the ice ages by lifting off in an alien UFO vessel when it, it, when it hit Earth over 10,000 years ago? I'd love to know how old these Mayan life forms are. According to the Arcebo return messages with the Chobolton alien binary code received, they have a civilization living in another solar system in outer space. I think we just haven't figured out how to identify their location based on the binary code provided in that alien crop circle. If they say it's between Jupiter, Saturn, and Venus, and the M15 Holman, Holman Pegasus star region, along with the first exoplanet ever discovered, HD 209458b, I had the star on here, HD 209458, then this is the exact location of where I've placed my estimations for the Maya planet and it's under a cloaking device. They live in the ocean in a short and a sort of biosphere, kind of like the movie we saw starring Polly Shore called Biodome. I love that movie. It was about something we've actually done and someone made a fictional tale about it. Quote, the Montreal Biodome, French, Biodome de Montreal, is a facility located in Montreal, that's in Canada, that allows visitors to walk through, re through replicas of four ecosystems found in the Americas. The building was originally constructed for the 1976 Olympic Games as a velodrome. It hosted both track cycling and judo events. Renovations on the building began in 1989. In the 1992, the indoor nature exhibit was open. The Montreal Biodome is one of our of four facilities operated by the Montreal Nature Museum, which include the Montreal In Insectarium, Montreal Botanical Garden, and Montreal Planetarium. It is an accredited member of both the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, AZA, and the Canadian Association of Zoos and Aquariums, CAZA. 
So I'm going to go over the data that came up. I googled the data just so you, you know what I'm talking about. So this is the movie Biodome. If you haven't seen it, you've got to see it. It's hilarious, okay? So it talks about this uh, 1996 film. Um, the director is Jason Bloom. The writers are Adam Lefts, Mitchell Peck, and there's other credits. There's Polly Shore, Stephen Baldwin, and William a Atherton. Um, I look at the IMDb stuff always for my movie stuff. So this is the Montreal Biodome, or um, not Biodome, Biosphere that they built. Um... Anyways, there's the coordinates and everything. It's on Wiki Montreal Biodome. Oh, it's called a Biodome. Okay. So I Google Biodome Biosphere and HD 209458, and this data comes up. I just found out that my sighting is called a star for HD 209458, and a planet that revolves around it is called HD 209458B. I was confused about that before. Now I know the truth. Yeah, I'm jumping around here. Oh, this is terrible. I, my brain's not working today. I'm sorry. It's I have my bad days, and this is one of them. <laughs> okay, so there's this, it's in the star constellation Pegasus. Um, the ascension numbers are 22 hours, 3 minutes, and 10.8 seconds. Declination is plus 18 degrees, 53 feet, and 4 inches. So anyways, I'm running out of battery power. That's the Montreal Biodome. There's some pictures. And here's some more stuff about the planets. And my thoughts, remember the wavelength function calculators in video number 17L? You would use it for the analysis of the function of white light and spectrum's wavelength or frequency to determine if it's a planet. That's on the Kepler spacecraft satellite, Dr. K. Botch. Um, and this is about spectros spectroscopy. Um, this is where you, they analyze white light and that tells them if there's a planet there. And it originated through the study of visible light dispersed according to its wavelength by a prism. Later, that concept was expanded greatly to compromise an interaction with radiative energy as a function for its wavelength or frequency. So, we did that in record time. I know I did it quicker. I was going to read all this stuff. But you can look it up on Wiki or you can...